Regularly scheduled programming will not be seen at this time so that we may bring you the final round of the U.S. Open Golf Championship. This trophy, emblematic of victory in the United States Open Golf Championship, can be won by any man. Twelve million golfers in this country play the game with an infinite variety of size, temperament, and ability. To compete in the United States Open, one must develop his skills to the degree that he establishes a two handicap or less and must then qualify in local and sectional play. The road to victory, however, is difficult and frustrating. Men like Jones, Varden, Nelson, Hogan, Palmer, and Nicholas have won this classic event. Victory in the United States Open starts as a dream, and anybody can possess it. But to win, you must defeat the finest men like Player, Crampton, Palmer, Trevino, and Nicholas. Do so, and you win this trophy. You also win the most prestigious event in the world of golf, the United States Open Championship. Yes, play in the pressure round of the United States Open is underway. We've had exciting play already, and for the next three hours, you're going to see a lot more. As Arnold Palmer and Jerry Hurd have come through with a birdie each, and they now share the lead at four under par. Their round today at one under. Tom Weiskopf having a good round. Now within one shot, he started out at two under today. John Schley has had an unusual round. He had a double bogey on the first hole, but came back to eagle the fourth. He is playing in a twosome with Arnold Palmer. Byron and I are uh, on a staff of nine commentators. Uh, and some 90 technical and production personnel are here, manning 24 color cameras. And Byram, I'm glad to be in your twosome, uh, former Open champion in 39. And this Open is no different than uh, the things that happened over 72 years of play. No, I should say not, Chris. I'm sure with all of the great names that we have on the leaderboard today, someone has their favorite, uh, maybe favorites. And of course, we have to call it as we see today. We can't say who's our favorite, but I would say this, that you should have some tremendous golf today. Right behind us is uh, an Ohio State graduate who's been the hottest golfer, and uh, he's very much in the battle, and uh, he could very easily win it today. Tom Weiskopf, who is in some trouble, however, at the sixth hole. The sixth hole here at uh, Oakmont is 195 yards long. It's one of the sensational par three holes that we've ever seen. He'll have a very long putt here. He, of course, uh, hit his tee shot on the tenth hole now. The hot man uh, today, Johnny Miller, went out in 32, as did Lanny Watkins, who had one birdie and two eagles. So they have come off the pace and are nearing the co-leaders, Arnold Palmer and Jerry Hurd. We're back now at the sixth hole, and Tom Weiskopf, who commented uh, before he started play on Thursday that he definitely has the desire to win. This is in the long rough, as you can see. Chris, uh, this uh, is downhill from where he is, and he must really finesse this ball. He must drop this ball very softly on the green, which is hard to do out of this long rough, because this green is very fast and downhill from where he is. We mentioned Watkins having a birdie and uh, two eagles. Well, Johnny Miller had five birdies in a bogey. Well, the uh, spectators and those that are cheering for Tom Weiskopf in the final round of the United States Open like the shot. And there you see the announced team of nine. Yes, and we even have a woman, a lady, on, in the group. And we welcome Marilyn Smith. And we hope she doesn't feel too uncomfortable. The ratio for her is very good, Byron. Yes, I should say that it is. But she can take care of herself on or off the golf course. At the 10th hole. Johnny Miller, who birdied uh, one, two, three, four, and nine. This is for a par at the 10th. This is a par four hole, 462 yards long. Johnny Miller, who several years ago was quite a sensation as an amateur in uh, his first open at Olympic in uh, San Francisco. Yes, he played remarkably well. I think he finished third. He was one of the leaders or core leaders right along through the great championship that they had there. That was the one where Arnie and uh, Casper had such a battle. Arnie losing seven strokes in nine holes to force a playoff and lost then. And Arnie right now is sharing the lead with 26-year-old Jerry Hurd, a Californian. We're still uh, uh, here at the par three sixth. Byron, isn't this one of your favorite holes on the Oakmont course? Yes, it really is, because it takes a great finesse iron shot into this green. Everybody can reach it with an iron, but the angle that the green sits, it slopes to your left, 
There's a large bunker on the right, and I'm sure that the reason Weisskopf was off to the right, that he tried to hold the ball up and not let the ball go left. And here you see Lee Trevino. And I think most everyone that follows golf knows that this is Jack Nicklaus. He is putting at the eighth hole here at Oakmont, a par three, a longer par three than six. This is a long putt for a par. Jack has had problems. He's even. Jack is a very deliberate putter, but uh, has putted reasonably well in the tournament, but hasn't played very well. And now not a tap in coming back either. And this will be a bogey four at the eighth hole for Jack Nicholas. You don't feel as badly making a bogey there as you would on some of the holes because it is such a difficult par three hole playing 250 yards. Bob Charles just made a par at the sixth hole. Bob Charles, who has indicated that he will perhaps leave the tour to go back to New Zealand. So he remains one under or three shots away from the lead. And three strokes here on this great championship course, hosting its fifth open. Really, is there not a great number of shots to make up, as we saw yesterday, Gary Player, who started out at five under. And then there was Jerry Hurd, who was seven behind Gary, that shared the lead with three others when third round play was completed. This is a very important putt that Tom has here. At this stage of the game, after gaining some strokes as he has, it's very important not to lose one. Whenever you lose one, it kind of sets you back if you've got a momentum going. So this is a most important putt for him at this time. One of a few in the top ten that has not won an Open, but uh, in the top ten, there are five previous Open champions, the five who have accounted for nine Open victories. This putt might move a slight bit to his right, and as you see, he's moving the putter very slowly, which you must do on these fast greens. However, they're just a perfect speed today. Again, for a par to remain three under or one shot away. Beautiful. Great job. Cool. He has really been playing great recently. Of course, he's always been a good player, but he seems to be playing more steadily and uh, have more confidence the last month. Uh, we have more uh, wind velocity today than any of the previous three days. More action to come during the next three hours. Let's take this pause for this message. Now you get a look at the co-leader here at Oakmont on the final round of the United States Open, Arnold Palmer, who won in 1960, lost to Jack Nicklaus on this very same course in a playoff in 1962, now is four under par. And he is out there alone. Arnold Palmer leads by one over Jerry Hurd, Julius Boros, and Tom Weiskopf, a man that has been driving back and forth to his home in Latrobe, Pennsylvania, a distance of about 39 miles and uh, each time having uh, as a passenger a man named Deke Palmer who taught him how to play, who still runs the show, Byron. Right. I imagine, Chris, that he's probably going with a five iron today, maybe even a six, because he's really charged up. 195-yard hole and a tough one. The pin cut where it is today, it's not an easy shot for Arnie because he doesn't fade the ball very well, and the pin cut on the right, why, well, it does make uh, the shot a little more difficult for Barney, and... Uh, He's wiping his hands off a little bit, and his airplane goes over. He always, uh, you see where the pin is, and he has to come across that bunker, and the, the green slopes to the golfer's left are away from that bunker, which makes, you can see the angle there. Very good. This is a rejuvenated army that you see lining the fairway here at 16. Uh, for the last couple of years, they haven't had quite as much to uh, march about, but this week they have had a, had a ball here in the Allegheny Hills. Oh, no. I heard Arnold Palmer say, oh, no. Uh, it's in the left rough short as the golfer plays the hole. As we look at the screen, of course, it's uh, to the right of the green, but we refer to it as the golfer sees it, the stars of the show. And now John Schley and Byron, on the very first tee, hit three balls. Well, on the very first hole, John had an unusual thing. He hit his first ball to the right, and they thought it was out of bounds. He hit another ball. They found that uh, actually when he got down, he wasn't out of bounds, so he's unplayable. So he had to forget the second tee shot and go back and hit another one because the ball was unplayable. 
made a double bogey six on the first hole and then the eagle on the fourth, so he's made a great comeback. Here's a man who's improved his score by three strokes each today. Look at that shot. Jerry Hurd, who is uh, tied for second, has improved his score by four shots each day. So if they can keep that pace, they'll be something. But here is the monster, or part of it. Oakmont course, 6,921 yards long, plays to par 71. You see the entire composite, and the road running through is the uh, ancient yet serviceable Pennsylvania Turnpike. These are the holes where we'll be seeing action. You've seen some there already on real open bonus coverage. That's the 195-yard par 3, and there you see how difficult it can be downhill, such a narrow opening. Wind can affect it. And uh, soon you'll see Arnold Palmer uh, putting or hitting another shot. Here is the seventh hole at Oakmont. It's 395 yards long, a par four. And it's not necessarily a breather. And look how it rolls. It's uh, uh, You walk down toward the tee bar, and you can't see the tee for a long time until you get to the crest. So it's sort of a blind hole. And the eighth hole is no breather by any means. A long one where yesterday even Jack Nicholas used a driver. 244, par three. There you see it, and there you see some of the 187 silica sand-filled bunkers here at Oakmont, hosting its fifth United States Open Championship. And here is nine, 480 yards, and at the end of this hole, it's a par five, a green that um, is about a half an acre in size, half of which is used for a practice putting green. Isn't that picturesque with the backdrop of the hills here? in the suburbs of Pennsylvania, and there you see the, the size of the green, about 20,000 square feet. And at this moment, in our first 15 minutes of our three-hour telecast, Arnold Palmer has the lead by himself at four under par with Boros uh, Hurd and Tom Weiskopf only a shot away, John Schlee, Lee Trevino, and Jim Colbert only two strokes away, so don't go away. And if you think your friends might be taking a nap on this lazy Sunday afternoon, call them and tell them that ABC Sports is on the air. Arnie uh, has a shot here that is not too difficult because uh, he has little room. The pin, he's going uphill, which uh, eliminates some of the speed, worry of the speed. His only problem here is it appears that he's buried right in the bunker. He's in the bunker on the upslope, right? and doesn't have a very good place to stand, so uh, he must just lob the club underneath the ball and the ball so land very softly. And And you see the gallery approved, approved very much of his shot. And now on the seventh fairway, here is Tom Weiskopf. Only one shot away from the leader, Arnold Palmer. 395-yard hole. This is a shot that Tom's been playing real well recently. He's uh, has a very smooth action, the upright swing, and it stops the ball, beats the ball very high, and stops very quickly. It's that just a little bit long, but it's all right, because the pin's way up in the back level part of the green. There we can see the following wind, couldn't we, Byron, here? It's picked up around uh, the Oakmont course now, and uh, that'll do a little changing of play as compared to yesterday or the day before. Just enough to make it just comfortable, though, Chris. It really isn't affecting the ball, but yet uh, it would make a ball fly just as Trevino, of what he went over. Trevino is on the right. Arnold Palmer on the left. Trevino is on the eighth green for a birdie. Here's his putt. Lee Trevino. <laughs> Trevino hit 18 greens here yesterday, Chris, which is a remarkable feat for this wonderful golf course. Now for Arnold Palmer to retain his lead, he must make this putt. He had putts like this yesterday and made them. In fact, to win this Open Championship, you have to make putts like this, Pro. Right. You're not going to win an Open Championship by missing putts. You see Trevino on your right, Arnold on left, going at the same time, and both of them for pars. Par threes. Trevino's uh, level at the eighth hole. Not Arnold Palmer. So now... We have a four-way tie for the number one spot here in the final round of the United States Open between Palmer, Boros, Hurd, and Weiskopf. Weiskopf, a new co-leader today. Schley has dropped out of the group of Hurd, Boros, and Palmer. John Schley, though, is 
two under and only sh one shot away along with uh, Lee Trevino, Jim Colbert, and Johnny Miller. Now, John has this for a birdie two, which uh, could move him back into uh, a lot better position. John Schley, in other words, his, In other words, Chris, his putt for birdie two was shorter than what Arnis was for a par three. Yes. You know, and starting off the first hole as he did with a double bogey, and the winner of only one tournament, the Hawaiian Open, I think he's recovered beautifully. Of course, the eagle at four helped. That settles you down on very quickly. Having played in this tournament, why well, something like that can really turn you around. Byron winning the Open at Philadelphia in 1939 in a double playoff. Craig Wood and Denny Shoot. Look at that putt. Mm. Now, count them. We have a five-way tie for the lead here in the final round of the United States Open. We may be here for a week. <laughs> well, there are worse places. It's That's lovely right. here. Here's Sam Sneed, 61 years old. At the 18th fairways in the right rough, Sneed at 10 over par. In the bunker, it was here in 1953 that he finished second to Ben Hogan in the open. At 289, Ben at 283. 289 is a very respectable score, and a lot of times you expect that to win here. There you see Tom uh, drawing that perspiration on the forehead. Can roll today. The temperature's about 80. The humidity is higher. Tom is just enough off the green here, Chris, that just that little collar there, he has to be careful coming off of that because that's a little slower than the green. If you hit it too hard to get out of that little longer grass, it's not long, but a little longer than the green, why, it could go considerably past. But Tom has been doing this rather well recently. He's going with the putter, which I think this is a very wise choice at this point. So far in 18 of his last 19 rounds, 68.9 average during those rounds. See, he was far enough over the green. He's going back uphill slightly, Chris. You notice how quickly that ball stops. That's not, you know it's going uphill when the ball stops that quickly here. What a stroke average, 68.9. And Byron, you know about that because the year you won 11 in a row and 19 tournaments, you averaged 68.3 strokes on the year. I'm going to wake up like Rip Van Winkle one of these days and find out that wasn't so, Chris, but uh, it was uh, very fortunate. And Tom has played beautifully this year, especially the last month. It takes a little time, I suppose, for these professionals to find themselves, Byron. Yes, it does. Uh, you have to have some experience. You have to become more settled. You have to decide what you have to do to live with yourself. You have to become more disciplined. And this is the main thing that Tom has done. At the ninth hole now, this is Jack Nicholas for an eagle, and he needs one. Jack Nicholas at one over par, the defending open champion. That'll be a birdie. That'll make him even par for the day. For the tournament, rather. This is the type of putt that you must make, and yet it's very difficult. These short ones, because you can't hit it so easy. Nicholas made his birdie. He is now even in this final round. Good putt, Tom Weiskopf. Remaining uh, deadlocked in that tie. Arnold Palmer, Julius Burroughs, Jerry Hurd, Tom Weiskopf share the lead. Well, Byron is always talking about putty. And Byron, how about telling us how to read the break and how to handle a speed putt on the greens like we have here at Oakmont, okay? You know, you hear us talk a lot on the TV and on all the golf shows about the break of the green, how to read the green and about how much the ball is going to break. So there's a, quite a few things that you should learn to do. Is number one is you'll see the players moving around a lot from side to side, trying to determine where the roll is. You're, a lot of times just right behind the ball, you can't see it. So you have to move around a little bit. Now on this break here, it breaks a lot to the right. I see the whole terrain of the green move to the right. So naturally you know the ball has to go to the right. You can see the mound coming off of here. And there's nothing on this side, so it goes that way. Now, another thing that you must be very careful of when you're judging the break of a green is to be careful that you line yourself up where you want the ball to start. You can't line the ball up to the hole and then pull the putt around the line. You must line yourself up on the break. In other words, if I think this putt's going to break, 
about three feet, which I think it is. Well, then I line myself up to that line and not toward the hole. This is the thing that so many of you uh, do not do. You line up to the hole, then look at the break. You must line your putter right up on the line in which you want the ball to go, just like this. You can see how that thing really does curve to the right. And you can also see how they roll. Now, speaking of rolling, you've heard an awful lot of talk about the greens here at Oakmont and how keen and fast they are. Well, they are, and I think the texture of the green is the best that I've ever seen. But now, for the tournament, excepting on Thursday, they have not been as fast as what usually they are for the National Open Championship here at Oakmont. Thursday, there was, oh, there was 30 men that didn't break 80. On Friday, the greens got damp, and then on Saturday, of course, we had rain, so they're not so fast. But yet, they are exceptionally keen and fast normally. They're about what the members play here most of the time. Now, I'd like to give you a couple of tips about putting fast greens. One of the key things that you want to do is you be sure that you don't hold the putter tight. You keep a light grip because you've gripped real tight, then you're liable to jerk it this way. If you do on a fast green, it's really going to grow. So hold a light grip. Now, the next thing you want to do when you stand at the ball, be sure that the sole of the putter does not sit real hard on the green. You just barely touch it because then you get, if you don't touch it that way, you get more of a feel in the fingers and in the grip of the putter. And then another thing is don't take the club back fast. Take it back very smoothly like this. Take it back very smoothly and short. Line the putter to go right on through following the ball. Because if you don't hit, if you hit it, then the ball is going to go too far. Now those are some things that you really need to do to put fast greens. Now back to some live action. Now Arnold Palmer at the seventh as Julius Boros, we just received word, has gone four under to hold the lead. Arnold Palmer at the seventh hole, a par four, 395 yards long, has what appears to be about an 18-foot putt for a three. Go to the right there yesterday, Chris, behind that bunker. Today he was in it, so uh, it is a very narrow driving hole because those two bunkers sit just on each side of the fairway there. It makes it quite... All right, as we watch Arnold, let's hear from Jim McKay. All right, Chris. Good afternoon. This is Johnny Miller. He did not have a good tee shot on the 603-yard par 5, so his second shot, he had to lay up a little bit. He's about 140 yards from the green now, hitting his third shot. There he is behind that bunker, and that bunker is about 490 yards from tee, or 113 from the front of the green. Now, the pin is on the front. It's very difficult to get there and yet not go past. But he has a fine shot. Johnny Miller will have a pop at his birdie. He got a birdie on the last hole. He started this day three over. He's now two under and only two shots out of the lead. In other words, he's five under the, for the day. If he pars in from here, he's got himself a 66. We'll keep track of that story. Now back to Chris. Okay, Jim. Uh, Sam Sneed shot a 73. Uh, final round for 295 or 11 over as we look at Julius Boros now. Byron? O.J., they call him. Smooth swinger. Yeah. Easy. Going, easy swinging, but knocks the ball a long way and quite well. And he's leading. He is four under par at three under Arnold Palmer, Tom Weiskopf, and Jerry Hurd. Nothing new to him. But what he won it in 60, 52, won it again in 63, and leading now, so he's ex certainly an experienced player. Playing with Jerry Hurd, who had the lead at one time today at four under, but he's dropped back to two under now. <laughs> They are playing the seventh hole, that very pretty uh, seventh hole here at Oakmont, 395 yards long, and both Hurd and Boros are in good shape during uh, play on this seventh hole in the final round. Up on the green, we have Arnold Palmer in the blue and the vi white, white visor, and John Schlee. Sun is coming through some haze here, and uh, it's, it's a very bright day. Yes, it makes it bright. It's really actually a little more difficult to judge distance on a day like today than it was yesterday. What about reading the uh, break in the green or the uh, what you want to see when you're lining up a putt on a bright day easier? No, it's a little little better on a little hazy day. Not a dark day, but a day where it's a little cloudy because you can see uh, today you look you see a lot of shadows which really sometimes are mis misleading. Okay. 
Arnold will be putting first, and this is for a three on the par four seventh. And Lenny Watkins for a birdie on the left. He's at the 13th green. He is five under for this round, Lenny Watkins, even par for the championship. What a young player. Look at that. He is six under for the day, which is equaling the pace of a tying the course record set on Friday by Gene Borick. That was Arnold Palmer's bid for a birdie at the seventh green. So he'll have that short putt to remain three under and to be one shot away along with Weiskopf and John Schlee with Boros Lee. It's good for after being in that bunker in two, uh, Chris. Looks easy to see these great players put on the green from about 160 or 70 yards out of a bunker, but it isn't that easy. Not with open pressure anyway, Byron. Lanny Watkins, who birdied uh, the second hole, and you just saw him get another birdie. Also today, uh, eagled four and nine. Slee uses the plumb bob method a lot of times in laying up his putt. Don't think this putt will do much breaking, not for here at least, uh, but it is uphill. On the left, Johnny Miller at the 12th hole for a birdie. Johnny Miller at two under. This is a big stroke coming up as John Schlee now at the seventh green for a birdie three. Mm. So like Palmer, he'll be very happy with a par four at the seventh hole to remain in a three-way tie for second. So John Schley, three under, along with Palmer and Weiskopf, with Boros leading by one stroke. Now let's go to Frank Gifford. And here is Tom Weiskopf. Tom Weiskopf putting for a birdie. He's on the... John Miller, meanwhile, picked up his putt at 12, his birdie putt. <laughs> Tommy, who has been up and down as we go back now to Chris Schenkel. Now Jerry Hurd, who is two under par. This is his second shot on the seventh hole. You, this is the green on which you saw Palmer and Schlee putt. At the eighth hole, Tom Weiskopf made his par to remain three under or one shot away. And now, guess who? So Any, easy. Anybody ever watched a golf swing would know that one. And that's the leader, Julius Boros. Mm, in position to perhaps gain another. He is remarkable. He just moves along like old man River. He doesn't get excited. Just keeps moseying along and knocking them up there and knocking them in. Byron, he opened with a 73, then a 69, yesterday a 68. And here he is, one under on his round today. Jerry Hurd, without the hat, led at one time today at four under, but is now two under par, tied for third with Lee Trevino. Okay, Frank Gifford. All right, the par three, 255 yard, eighth hole. John Schley on the tee, he will be hitting first. He's three under par, trailing Julius Boros by one shot. John Schley, who is a strong believer in astrology, he's a Gemini, and he says his moon is in the right position. And Byron, it's a long hole, 244, the pin is at the back, it'll play about 250, a difficult hole. John Schley having by far his best year. He's won on the Pro Tour over $67,000 thus far. And he's playing partner on the left, Arnold Palmer. I'm fortunate today to have Marilyn Smith with me. And uh, Marilyn, it's a long par three. Yes, it's playing, like you say, about 250 yards, uh, Frank. And John Slee, you know, has had some lessons from Ben Hogan, so there's no, it's not a surprise that he's playing so well in this championship. He's working very hard on the setup at the ball and his backswing. He told me that yesterday. And he's in, got the bunker on the right, and you mentioned Ben Hogan. He was 
A winner here in the U.S. Open in 1953. And here's the man they have all come from the hills to see. From 39 miles away, Latrobe, the king of the golf, Arnold Palmer. Frank, you know, Arnold has three special things going for him today. Uh, a new putter, which he uh, received or bought two weeks ago. Uh, he's wearing no sunglasses or no eyeglasses at all. And he had a tip from his father, the deacon. And these three things are definitely pluses in Arnold's favor here. Well, I tell you, uh, deacon wouldn't tell me the tip. But maybe when he wins or if he wins the tournament, Arnold will probably will give out the information. <laughs> I couldn't get it from him, though, darn it. <laughs> All right, Arnold Palmer, one shot off the lead of Julius Boros, Oakmont Country Club. The par three, eight pole, 250 yards. And in good position is Arnold Palmer on the green, number eight. Let's go now to Chris Schenkel. And then this is Jerry Hurd, two behind the leader. This is for a birdie three to get closer. Fine putt. So it should be a four for Jerry Hurd, and he'll remain two under along with Lee Trevino, as we now have a four-way tie for second between Palmer, Schley, Weiskopf, and Johnny Miller. Boros leading by one. Jerry Hurd, par four at the seventh hole. We have a total of 13 holes that we completely cover here in our U.S. Open coverage. We're proud of it, and we hope you're enjoying it. It's Julius Boros for a three. Yes, he could go two strokes in the lead at this mm -hmm. point, and that'd be the first time anybody's led for that amount since the first round when Gary Player did. Unfortunately, Gary had a bad day yesterday. This is the type of putt that when Gay O.J. really gets ready, why well, he won't be long till he hits it. Makes up his mind and take a couple of practice strokes, and then away he, away he goes. He can putt fast screens good because he holds the putter very lightly and rather loosely and takes it back very slow. Play enough break on that one. That uh, short putt for his par four to remain in the lead by one. It's only Gary Player now is two over for the championship. So it's four under for Julius Boros. Palmer, Schley, Weiskopf, and Miller at three under. Trevino and Hurt at two under. Let's go to the 13th hole, and here's Frank Gifford. And on the tee, Johnny Miller, he's six under par. He's having a sensational round. He can par in and tie the course record that was set two days ago by Gene Boric. Frank, he's oh. probably using a, a four or five iron to this hole. Beautiful shot. Oh, and Johnny Miller has had a sensational shot for 13. About four to five feet away for another birdie to go seven under par. And the U.S. Open will continue from the Oakmont Country Club right after this message. Arnold Palmer, it's birdie putt at number eight. Morning. Trying for the lead and just slipping by. Trying for a share of the lead with Julius Boros. Palmer will have that short putt to remain at three under par. Boros at four under par, and this is the 73rd U.S. Open Championship. <laughs> and Palmer picks up his par. We'll go over to Bill Fleming. All right, and here is one of Palmer's disciples, Lanny Watkins, who, if he makes this, would be seven under for the day. Parring in, he would break the course record. He's at 14. This is for a birdie, and he misses it. So he will take the par. And remain six under for the day, one under for the championship, but don't count him out yet. This 23-year-old star has all the confidence in the world. He is the Byron Nelson uh, champion of this year, and you saw him win right here on ABC. Frank, you have more action at eight. All right, this is John Schley. John Schley at three under par. And Lee Trevino, we've just been informed, has birdied nine. That makes Lee Trevino a two-time U.S. Open champion, one shot off the lead. So at three under par are Arnold Palmer, Lee Trevino, Tom Weisskopf, Johnny Miller, and John Schley. And this is John Schley. This is for par for Schley. Oh. 
So John Schlee will drop to two under par. Schlee at two under par. Let's go to Chris Schenkel. And Tom Weiskopf in a little trouble at the par five ninth hole. This is his second shot. Weiskopf at three under. In a five-way tie for second behind Julius Boros. Heard him yell four on the right, Chris, which mm -hmm. meant he was over over in the right and the people in the rough over there. Way yeah. over to the right by the concession stands, Byron. Ooh, boy, that, there you see the striped ten of those. That's black over there. Okay, Frank. And this is Johnny Miller at the eighth, par three eight. This is for a birdie and to go seven under par. <laughs> Johnny Miller is really hot today. Johnny Miller has moved into a tie for the lead, but Julius Boris, he has seven under par, and this 26-year-old youngster is really having a round, and there is Julius Boris's ball just in the back of the par three eighth hole. Julius Boris, now a co-leader. And the playing partner, Jerry Hurd, two under par, has won three championships, two of them coming on difficult courses, the Colonial, of course, and then Akron last year or two years ago. And Hurd has gone long and to the left. This action at the par three eighth hole. Co-leaders at the moment in the 73rd U.S. Open, Julius Boris and Johnny Miller at four under par. Walking on to the green, the par three, eighth hole, are Jerry Hurd on your right, Julius Boros on your left, and our colleague Dave Marr walking around with his electronic apparatus is down in the area. Dave, what kind of a shot first will Jerry Hurd have and then Julius Boros? Well, first of all, he's in the uh, tall rough that you see at all the U.S. Opens. It's not really too tall in the area where he is. Jerry got a little bit of a break there. He hit uh, one of the people in the gallery there and stopped him just short of going into these big pine trees, or really not big ones, but uh, very bushy pine trees. So he got a little bit of a break here. He's about hole high and about, um, I'd say, 45 feet from the flag with a pretty good line. Julius, on the other hand, has gone through the green, and he his line is just a little more fluffy than Jerry's. I'm standing right between both players, and I'm not going to be able to talk too much more, Frank. All right, you're looking at Jerry Hurd. He is 26 years old, out of Visalia, California. Interestingly enough, of the 10 leaders, the top 10 leaders who teed off today after 54 holes, the average age was 36. And while we watch Jerry Hurd, let's go quickly over to Henry Longhurst. And now we see approaching on his second at the 15th, the long par for Lanny Watkins, who is having a tremendous round, second only to that being done by Johnny Miller. Watkins starting five over and is now one under. So he's six under for the day, safely on the green, level with the flag on his left. That's the 15th. Watkins one under within three of the two leaders, Boris and Miller. And we'll go back to Frank Gifford. Thank you, Henry. And Jerry Hurd has been looking over the shot. And again, he is on the par three eighth hole. He's two under par, two shots off the lead of Julius Boris and Johnny Miller. And it's underway. Beautiful shot by Jerry Hurd, but it just trickles by as well, the Maryland appears to me, as we watch Julius Boros, who is now away, that the greens are beginning to get a little harder and more in character with Oakmont. And while we were away, you saw Bonnie Watkins hit his second shot to 15. Julius Boros chipped up, but Jerry Hurd is still away. But they seem to be much faster now, Maryland. Yes, they are. And the wind is picking up a little bit more than it was yesterday, which, of course, helps to dry out the greens. It's interesting to note that in a practice round, Jerry Hurd and uh, young Johnny Miller were playing together, and uh, Johnny was giving Jerry a lesson out there in the course, and Lanny Watkins was chipping in with some advice, and it certainly helped Jerry with his uh, game this week. All right. On the right is Lee Trevino for a birdie, putting at 10. And Jerry Hurd is trying to save par at 8 on the left. Notice how...
Jerry Hurd remains two under par. We'll go to Johnny Miller and Bill Fleming. All right, holding the hottest hand in Pennsylvania right now is Johnny Miller, second shot on the par four, 14th hole. If he pars in, he would have 64. A beautiful shot just over the little ridge in the center of the back edge of this green, and he is only about eight or nine feet from another birdie. He birdied the first four holes today. Back to you, Frank. All right, from the youth, 26 years old to 53 years old, the age of Julius Boros, but it doesn't show. He's a co-leader with Johnny Miller at four under par, and he gets his par at the par three eighth to remain in a tie with Johnny Miller. Marvelous man, a professional for 23 years, and we will go to Henry Longhurst, who's working with Lonnie Watkins. Now round to the 15th green. Watkins waiting to putt. And his playing partner, Vinnie Giles, who in the second round, he's in the bunker there on the left, in the second round, hold his second shot here with a six iron for an eagle two. Now he's going to do very well to get away with a four. Giles, at the moment, five over. But it's Lanny Watkins we're really watching who's six under for the day and one under for the tournament. Now we just see Giles come out of this 80 yards long bunker. <coughs> well, that's pretty good and it gives him a good chance from eight feet to get away with a four. That's when he giant. And we were going across the ridge here. Across the Pennsylvania Turnpike, which cuts this course in half. Huge crowd here today. It was beautiful sunshine. We'll go back to Chris Schenkel. At the 10th hole, Lee Trevino <laughs> for his par to remain three under. <laughs> Lee Trevino, who many think today could be a great day for him. There is a competitor who will be defending his British Open Championship at Troon to be televised right here on ABC, Byron, July 14th. Right. And speaking of that, here's the man that won the Walter Hagen Award this year, an international board of judges determining that Henry Longhurst has done the most this year for international understanding of golf, Ryder Cup, Walker Cup, BBC, ABC, and let's hear from Henry Longhurst, the winner, right now. Well, spare my blushes, and let's have a look at Lanny Watkins. And I hope that Byron Nelson would agree with me that Lanny Watkins is one of the very few very good amateurs who turned immediately into a very good pro. That's comparatively rare. Is that right, Byron? That's absolutely correct, Henry. <clears throat> and on the left is Miller, hoping for a, a, a yet another birdie on 14, but we'll just watch Watkins first. He's from about 30 feet running down, and that's a poor putt by Watkins. Didn't hit it properly, never went down. And that's a great shame. It's left him five feet short and a very difficult one. Now, let's have a look on the left at Miller. And we go to Bill Fleming. Who's that? All right, it's about a nine-footer. A very delicate putt for this young man who burst upon the horizon our very first year here at ABC and covering the USGA Open at Olympic in 1966. Oh, that was for a birdie. Would have put him in the lead. But it's for a very safe par here at the 14th. He still remains... Seven under par for the championship. Brilliant round. Here today, he's four under for the championship total, but seven under on today's round. So if he pars out, he would have a USGA record equaling 64. Chris? And our ABC cameras show you the ninth green just before the clubhouse. This is the green where practice putting on the, the near side, as we look, uh, often takes place. 20,000 square feet. Palmer and Schley have played through Weiskopf, Byron. And we uh, showed you the stripes of the tent, a concession stand, a few moments ago, and that's where Tom hit his ball, somewhere over there in that area. And that's dark. That's dark country over there. That's too bad that he's over there. So we have Palmer. He will get a uh, lift from the concession stand, but there's still a lot of trees and grass and uh, a lot of... Uh, messed up ground because of the gallery walking during this wet weather. For a moment, uh, let's hear from Henry Longhurst. Well, now, we left Lanny Watkins with that putt rather woefully short, and he's putting from about five feet to save a par four, and does it very, very well. So, Watkins starting five over. He's now one under, six under for the day, 
and he's on our leaderboard, and anybody who's on that might still win. Now back to Chris. And Arnold Palmer is on the ninth green, along with John Schley. Arnold at three under par. That's where he started. Playing steady. But to win, needing a birdie or two. It's rather fast from where he is. This one, the faster green. He's putting downhill slightly. It'll really roll. Now watch it. This is for an eagle, the par five ninth. Rather good position for a birdie four, Byron. Yes, I would certainly assume that he's going to make that one because it's rather close and uh, he's putting quite well this week. He's going to be careful with it, which he should be. Now John Schley. John Schley, who had rounds of 73, 70, and yesterday 67, is now two under. And for John, it is also a putt for an eagle three at the ninth hole with another well, nine to play. Lanny Watkins made an eagle at four, an eagle at nine, and he made an eagle at four. Now we'll see if he can make an eagle nine because he's watched Arnold's putt, so I'm sure he knows the speed of it from the, by now. Playing for a total purse of 20, 225,000, 35 to the winner, 18 second, 13,000 third. We'll see the birdie try in a moment. Now, Henry Longhurst. And they're on the 15th. A sensational round of Johnny Miller. I think. And he's in fine position right up in the middle there, and I think I'm right in saying that if he got five more birdies, he'd be around in 59. That's a wonderful round there so far by Johnny Miller. We go back to Chris. <laughs> five round of 59. <laughs> that came from the former German amateur champion, Henry Longhurst. Now, you know, Chris, that uh, how tough the greens are and how careful the players are when you see someone of the putt of this link being as careful with it as Arnie is. And rightfully they should because it isn't all easy. Arnold Palmer has tied for the lead. Julius Barros, Johnny Miller, and Arnold Palmer now share the lead in this final round of the United States Open. And the uh, hills are rocking with crap. Now at 18, it goes up on the scoreboard. Listen to them. Secretary and Arnold Palmer have received the most applause I've ever heard. Now here's John Schley, and there's a birdie four for John Schley. That puts him three under and ties him for second with Lee Trevino and Tom Weiskopf. I have never seen such golf. No, anywhere. Chris, there hasn't been really much change since we started today. They're a little bit more under par, but the leaders are still there. They're still going. And we've had a, that great charge by Johnny Miller, a remarkable round from a young player, or anybody really. And an uh, older player, Julius Boros, hitting his shot. He is tied for the lead with Miller and Palmer. Just on the green, as you see there. Just on this side of the fringe. Long ways away, but he's on. That's what counts. And that's Jerry Hurd walking ahead. Jerry Hurd now who was one of the four tied for the lead at three under is two under. Uh, Jerry had a bad tee shot and actually hit over in the number one fairway. So the sh next shot he hits will be his third on the par five ninth, Byron. Well, you've got to keep him in the fairway. And of course, uh, on a hole like the ninth, why Jerry should expect to make a birdie because you can reach this green easily enough today. 
But wherever you miss one, why, you have to pay the penalty, especially here at Oakmont. Byron, as we're seated behind 18 Green, the 10th tee is just down to our right, and people are standing and cheering Arnold Palmer, who is moving to that spot to hit his shot. There they are. You don't think he's unpopular around here? <laughs> well, it was here in 62 that he lost in a playoff. Lost the Open to Jack Nicklaus, and that was a crushing blow. Well, it's remarkable that a man uh, can continue to play as well as long as Arnie Hand, really. There's a man that sort of looks like Arnold Palmer, the width of the shoulders and strength. And, and he's young, 26 years old, as we have a battle going in the United States Open. Palmer, Miller, Boros tied at four under. Weiskopf, Trevino, and Schlee at three under. Jerry Hurd at two. Lanny Watkins at one. Jim Colbert, Jack Nicklaus, and Bob Charles are even par. This is the final round. Now, should there be a playoff, we'll be on the air here on ABC at 4.30 Eastern Time. So don't go away. We have a lot of time. Of course, you know, Chris, they see John take, I mean, uh, Jerry take a lot of time here because he realizes that he, if he makes a five here, he's lost a stroke to most of the leaders of the field. And when you're a couple of shots behind already, you cannot afford to lose another one at this point. Take a lot of birdies in to make up. It appears now that Weiskopf is going to uh, hit up from the, the area of the concession tent, Byron, here at Oakmont. Tough break for Tom. Yes, well, he didn't hit a very good drive, and then he tried to hit a long, high second in there, and... There, the man in uh, yellow, Tom Weiskopf, moving the crowd back now, uh, sort of a pathway alleyway for him to hit his shot. That'll be his third shot. He will have a difficult shot from there to get the ball close to the hole, even if he does have a good line. Of course, we cannot tell, as you know from here, what the lie is like, but the pin is cut close to that side of the green, and there's a bank between that goes up to the edge of the green, and then the pin is cut close, so he will play a remarkable shot if he gets it very close to the hole. Baron, as we uh, look at those trees, one of the unique things of Oakmont with 187 sandfill bunkers is the fact that they have hundreds, thousands of trees, but very few of them ever affect play, which is unlike many courses where we see championships played. Right, they keep back out of play. You know, at Scotland, England, they don't use... Ooh, look at that shot. And you hear it from the applause in the gallery. That's a remarkable shot from where he was. That is a beautiful third shot, Tom Weiskopf. Henry Longhurst. Uh, back in the middle of the 15th fairway, a sensational Johnny Miller. Shot of about 160 yards. Played 14 holes. He had seven birdies and seven pars. And, oh, look at that. Oh, dear. What a round this is coming up here. Now we go back to Jim McKay. Here we have Lee Trevino on the 11th green. This is the par four. This is for a birdie. A birdie that would move Lee Trevino into a tie for the lead with Arnold Palmer, Johnny Miller, and Julius Boros. This could make it a four-way tie. It's a little short, and he knew it right away. So it'll be a par for Lee that keeps him at minus three, but only one shot out. Remember, we have six men within a shot here. Lee Trevino moving on to the 12th hole, and we'll return here to Oakmont in a minute. Just a moment to go at the ninth hole. Tom Wise called for a birdie. He is now tied for the lead with Julius Boros, Johnny Miller, and Arnold Palmer, and what a birdie on the ninth hole after that long wait, Byron. Yes, it really was. You'd have to say he is fortunate to hit the ball that far to the right and then have a clear shot to shoot to the flag, though. Jerry Hurd now getting ready to hit his third shot. on the par five ninth. Ian Julius Boros in a twosome. 65 players in the third and this, the fourth and final round today. Little nets flying around this ball there. It can certainly distract your concentration to have something trying to land on the ball when you're trying to hit it. Jerry just has a nice high pitch shot to hopefully put this ball close to the hole. A little pitching wedge. It 
Carpenter had a lot of stuff on it. The fairways also, Chris, are just beautiful. You can really nip the ball, put a lot of pitch, a lot of spin on it. All right, Henry. Now back to the 15th green, where we saw that wonderful shot from Johnny Miller. Only about eight feet from the hole. A 463-yard par four. And this for yet another birdie. He played 14 holes, and he's seven under for those 14. Can this make it eight under? And if it does, he takes the lead. Oh, well done. Well, wasn't that wonderful? That's 15 holes he's played, eight birdies, and the rest passed. And now there's Johnny Miller leading the field all on his own after 15 holes. Now back to Chris Schenkel at the ninth. And <clears throat> Byron Nelson, uh, is still shaking his head. <laughs> yes, some of the scores that they're shooting here today is just hard to believe, really. Especially Miller. Now, Judas has this putt for an eagle, but uh, it is a type of putt that he would be delighted to get it close to the hole because he's many feet away from the hole. You can watch now. You can see how much it rolls, 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 rolls. He, this is a tremendous screen. It just goes on and on and on. So that is a long putt for a birdie four, which would tie him with Johnny Miller. Johnny Miller, five under par. He started out today at three over. And David Marr, I know you're in disbelief. That's an incredible round, Chris. There's so much going on out here, I can't, I can't hardly stand it. Just sensational, eight under par. And Arnold's just hit a great shot at 10. It's a little bit strong, it looks like. Going through the green, but he had a great shot from where he was over in the right rough. He had a pretty wild drive here, but just uh, hit it through the green. I don't know whether it reached the trap or not. Just a little bit in the high grass there, short, but uh, about uh, 70, 80 feet from the flag. John Schley, who drove down the middle of the fairway. This hole's playing a little longer today. We're going into the wind, so this hole is playing all of its 462 yards, and Schley is hit a marvelous looking shot. Looks to be. 15, 12, 15 feet from where I am. But just a real fine golf shot. Let's go back to you, Chris. All right, David. 404, Jerry Hurd at the par five ninth hole. Just like that. Pretty's everywhere here at Oakmont today. Jerry Hurd now goes three under to be tied with Lee Trevino and John Schlee for second. Make it third because Johnny Miller is five under. Arnold Palmer, Julius Boros, and Tom Weiskopf are four under and tied for second. Here's Boros. This would tie him with Miller. They would share the lead. Not quite. Jim McKay. Here's Lee Trevino. Lee Trevino about to hit his second shot on the 603-yard par 5, 12th hole. Lee had a near-perfect tee shot, 270 yards, and on the right-hand side of the fairway, this one straight down the middle again, and he is in perfect position once again to fly his ball in here on his third shot. Lee Trevino, two shots away from the leaders. Remember, it's Johnny Miller all by himself now. One shot behind Arnold Palmer, Julius Boros, and Tom Weisskopf. And then Lee Trevino tied with Johnny Schley and Jerry Hurd. One of the many functions of the United States Golf Association is to maintain a museum, you know, USGA Museum located in a wonderful old mansion in the town of Far Hills, New Jersey. Open seven days a week and there's no charge. You ought to stop over there. Fascinating displays tracing the history of the game. Everything from golf balls stuffed with feathers, the old feathery, to the one iron used by Byron Nelson. That's right, in the 1939 Open to make a double eagle. Bet you remember that one, Byron. Now to Keith Jackson, of course. Thank you, Jim. You're looking at Lanny Watkins. He is hitting his approach shot on the par 4 17th hole. It's a little wedge shot. Pops it up. Has it on the flag. Stops it at the hole. Look at that. Lanny Watkins. Watkins. That's the closest I've seen in four days of golf here at the old Oakmont course. And the way they are slicing this course this today, you've got to think the membership will just be suffering all over the place. Here's Dave Marr. Arnold Palmer at the 10th hole 
Part of it is four under par. Has to get this down in two to stay four under. He's chipping back up the hill, and it should break a little bit from his left to right. He's got a pretty difficult shot to get down in two. Somewhat because of his stance, and he's hit it just a little bit too strong. But a good shot, nevertheless. A very fine shot. If he makes it four here, it'll be some four after the drive that he hit. Well, the people are just clapping for him every single hole. I never saw so many people out here that all knew him or know him or pulling for him. You wouldn't think there's anyone else playing. Let's go back to Keith at 17. Well, this is 16 with Johnny Miller. The par three, 228 yards from where he has teed his ball to the pen. The pen cut in the back right of the green. Matty Watkins a tap in to go two under for the tournament. Johnny Miller having a look after hitting an iron. The wind at their back. The hole is playing short today. And Johnny Miller is on the green and he will have a putt in the neighborhood of 70 feet. And he'll have to go across a big crown in the middle of the green. Extremely difficult putt to get the ball close to the hole. Now John Schley at work and here is Dave Marr to describe the action. John Schley. Got this putt of about 12, 15 feet for a birdie three at the 10th hole, which would put John four under and in a tie for second at the moment. He didn't like it. He knew he didn't make it as soon as he hit it. When you see a player move like that, you know that it's, it's gotten away from him or he's left it short or Something, whenever they make a sudden move like that. Let's go to Jim McKay and Lee Trevino. This is Lee. He is uh, oh, a little under 100 yards from the flagstick, which is on the front of the green. Now, remember, this runs away from the golfer. It comes downhill as it comes towards us. If he can get it close, he can get a birdie here, possibly. 603-yard par-5 hole, Trevino. Now you see it, it's going to break in a little bit to the right, but he's going past the flagstick. He'll be coming back up, and it'll be a little slower that way. Back to you, Dave. Arnold Palmer at number 10, putting for a par four. He needs his putt to stay four under and one shot back of John Miller. He's got to make this putt. Can't start making bogeys now. This is when you have to turn it on if you're going to win. Putting for a par four, and he got it. Great four from where he was. Just sensational. Leaves him four under. And he's happy about that, too. And here we are at Oakmont. What a great tournament going on today. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. That was a... Johnny Miller on the 16th just rolled the ball some 72 feet and stopped it about four feet from the hole. But it's below the hole where you can take a good firm wrap at a flat level putt and knock it in. Johnny Miller with nine birdies and one bogey on the 16th. And here's the putt. Now, this is a very difficult hole. It's difficult for a lot of reasons. One, it's terribly long. Secondly, you go across a big crown. Uh, speed so vital to the stroke. And he put it in there nicely for about a four-footer. Now, Lee Trevino and Jim McKay. This will be Lee's attempt at a birdie on the 12th hole. I have never in my life seen so many golfers playing so well. In fact, it's never happened in the history of the U.S. Open. They've never had four men, for example, tie for the lead going into the last day. And it isn't a question of people stumbling to victory the way it sometimes happens. They're all going for it. Trevino started the day one under. He's now three under. This could make him four under. Ugh, all the way around. You see that tremendous break from right to left. Johnny Miller on the left now. This is for a par. One of the few times he's had a sizable putt at all for a par today, but no problem. He's only had one bogey. Johnny Miller could be headed for the greatest round in U.S. Open history. 64 is the record, remember. Trevino holding out for his par, remaining three under, two shots out of the lead. Lee Trevino, who seven years ago was totally unknown to the American golfing public. Imagine that. Since then, he's won two U.S. Opens, two British Opens. One of the great stories. That's Jim Colbert, his fellow competitor whom he's, with whom he's paired today. Colbert not playing too... Well, yeah, he started one under. He's even, so... Just one over in today's round, but that's the quality of the play. One over doesn't get you anywhere. You just keep falling back. Colbert remaining five strokes out of the lead now. 
Tommy Weisskopf has more trouble back on 10, and Dave Mars there. What's it look like, uh, David? Well, Jim, it seems he's in a little rule seminar here after number <laughs> 9, and uh, number 10, he has just taken a drop, uh, two club lengths. Now, I don't know what he took the drop for. There was a little discussion there, and then he was allowed to... Uh, move it two club lengths and take a drop where he's now it's still in the rough but at the top of the trap here now he doesn't appear to have a very good lie and i don't know whether it was a free drop or a one-shot penalty which i'll find out as soon as and i just found out we he did in fact receive a free drop so he is now hitting his second shot here at the 10th hole he doesn't have a very good stance though and a shot say about 200 yards and he's playing into the wind it's uh picked up a little bit here in the afternoon and it's uh, uh hole is playing a little bit longer than it has the first three days he didn't quite get all of it just going to run down somewhere probably 20 30 yards short of the green not too bad a shot from where he was though very fine very fine out from there tom weisskopf who is Certainly in a shape to win his third tournament in a row if he can get to making some birdies here. He's three under par for the tournament. And let's go back to Keith Jackson. And here is the man of the day, perhaps the man of the 73rd U.S. Open. Pars in. He sets an all-time U.S. Open record. It'll be a record 63. Johnny Miller on the par four, 322-yard par four. Hitting a three-wood up over the top of the hill. He's got it on the right side of the fairway. It's on the short grass. He will have a probably a full wedge, considering the state of the wind, into the pin, which is cut way back in the back of the green here on 17. Now here is Frank Gifford. And this is Lee Trevino at the par 3 13th. And a man who can charge. We've seen him. We saw him reel off five birdies at the Tournament of Champions in a row earlier this year. And he's only two shots off the lead. Frank, he drilled that one oh. in there. Beautiful. And Lee Trevino in shape for birdie at 13. As we go over to Chris Schenkel. 23-year-old Lanny Watkins is here on the 72nd hole of this championship. Lanny Watkins at two under par. He started out at five over, so he, Byron, he's having a round of seven under. Remarkable. Really remarkable. Some of the play here today has been... Just unbelievable. However, I will say this, Chris, that... All right. For the moment, let's go to Jim McKay. Here we are with Arnold Palmer at the 11th hole. This is the short par four. He's put it on the right side of the fairway and now approaches the green with a Pittsburgh-type smokestack in the background. What a shot. Arnold had a birdie here yesterday, and he could easily get one today. And if he does, he'll move into a tie for the lead with Johnny Miller. You truly may be watching the greatest U.S. Open in history, and every year it seems to get tighter and tighter and more and more exciting. There is no tournament like this one in the world. There is the scoreboard, Johnny Miller. Remember uh, at Olympic in 1966, he was a 19-year-old son of a member and almost caddied in the tournament but qualified to play in it and almost won it, finally finished eighth. One shot ahead of Arnold Palmer and Julius Boros at the age of 53, of Tommy Weisskopf, who has a very personal story here uh, in the last couple of months. His father died, and since then he has taken hold of himself. And look at him right there. Back to you, Dave Marr. Thank you, Jim. And that's Tom Weisskopf, who got ready to play, but uh, I think he could hear the noise from uh, Arnold Palmer's gallery just ahead of him there. And he stepped back to really get ready, because he's got to get in in two here. His uh, shot, he's pitching a little downhill, and it should break from right to left, his right to left. He's got a little bit of green to work with, but it should be fairly fast, and he's played a pretty good shot. That's the very, very nice shot, as a matter of fact, but these greens are so fast, just about the time you think they're going to stop rolling is when they just begin to roll another couple of feet. Tom Weisskopf, who is four under, and tied for second with... Arnold Palmer, who is directly ahead of him, and Julius Boris, who is just behind him. And let's go to Jim McKay. Okay, David. Well, there is John Schlee, playing partner of Arnold Palmer today, on the 11th green. Now, Schlee is three under, a stroke behind Palmer, and Palmer is a stroke behind Johnny Miller. Schlee will have this for a birdie, both of them with birdie putts on the 11th hole. Well, you know, last year we had that open out at Pebble Beach. We thought that was the best thing we ever saw. Then we went over to Muir Field and saw the most exciting British Open, certainly of our time. And now here we are with this one. 
Johnny Miller, the leader, remember, one stroke back, Palmer, Boros, and Weisskopf, two strokes back, Trevino, Schlee, and Hurd, three strokes back, Lanny Watkins, who's seven under par, was he, the last time we heard for the day? Let's go up course with Johnny Miller to Keith Jackson. All right, Jim. John sitting out there, almost perfect position for a wedge into the green on this par four, 17th hole. He'll have to carry the ball right about 95 yards from that point. He's five under. He leads. He's eight under for the day. He has it high. He has it on line. He stops it eight feet from the hole. Johnny Miller. Eight under par for this round. Five under par for the tournament. And when Lady Fade is holding your hand, I guess you just grip it as much as you can. Yeah, you know, here's John Schley again. Here's Jim. John Schley for the birdie on 11. To put him within a shot of the lead, at least momentarily. But stay around. No, no, no. What's going on at 10, Dave? Dave Marr, you back there? Yes, Jim, I certainly am. And this is Tom Weisskopf at the 10th hole with about a four or five foot putt for his par. John Schley did make his par at number 11. And Tom's putt slides by. Drops him back to three under for the tournament if he makes this little one. That's too bad. You hate to see a man may start making bogeys at this point. And this is some exciting golf tournament. Miller makes that putt at 17, and it'd be pretty hard to catch because it seems like in a U.S. Open, the first man in with a low score, it's pretty tough to beat once he's already made the scores. But meanwhile, Tom has made a bogey five at 10, and there you see Arnold Palmer and Jim McKay at number 11. This, of course, again, is for the birdie. It would move him into a tie for the lead at this moment. He really needed that one. By the way, if uh, Johnny Miller sets that new U.S. Open record, he'll beat the record of 64, which is held by Lee Mackey, Tommy Jacobs, and Reese McBee. But lest you think that says anything about Oakmont being easy, it's interesting to point out that the, the our previous record was set at Marion Congressional and Olympic, three of the great golf courses in the country. Seems to happen that way once in a while. But Arnold Palmer settles for the par four at the 11th hole, remains one shot out still, that's all. Pending Johnny Miller's putt up on 17. There you see the leaderboard once again. Miller a shot ahead of Palmer, Boros, then Weisskopf and Trevino and Schley. Gee, keep an eye on Lee Trevino, boy. He's still poised as he moves up the course. Jerry Hurd's had some problems today, but he's only two shots out. Lanny Watkins having a great round. Just imagine between Boros and Lanny Watkins, there's only 30 years in age. We call this the battle of the ages, and it still is. Let's go to Frank Gifford now. You heard those roars. Go Arnie. That's the Army. And okay, we'll Frank. watch uh, Jim Colbert on 13. Jimmy, and what a sensational term it is. And Jim Colbert is back to even par. And who would have ever dreamed even par and you're trailing seven golfers. Jim Colbert. Frank, may I say something that, uh, oh. Well, we'll come back to you, Marilyn, as we go over now quickly to Keith Jackson. If you don't mind, Marilyn, we'll look here at, J at Johnny Miller, who is looking at his opportunity for a birdie here on the par 4 17th hole. If he gets it down, he will assume for the moment a two-shot lead over the field. It will be his 10th birdie of this round. It will put him six under par. The BYU graduate walking in history at this moment at the U.S. Open on the old Oakmont course. This is, I called it eight. I'd back off and say it's a 10-footer. He took it on the high side, had it a little too hard, and the ball slid across the top of the cup. He will settle for a par. He has parred this hole all four rounds during the U.S. Open. If he taps this in successfully, which surely he will, he will go to the 18th tee, eight under par for the day and five under par for the tournament key is the leader. So Johnny Miller, just one hole away from setting a new scoring record for the U.S. Open. Again, Dave Marr. 
And we have Julius Boris. So you see Johnny Miller there moving to the 18th tee. And this is Julius Boris. He's, this is where he hit his second shot at the 10th hole. Julius missed the fairway here at 10, which he doesn't very often do, and got a pretty bad lie in the left rough. And he is now still in the rough, about 60 yards short of the flag, playing his third shot. And I would like to say that one reason they're shooting low scores is because of the condition of the course. It's an absolutely marvelous condition. And you see Julius playing his third shot into the green. And he's hit a pretty good shot. Ten. And let's go to 14. On the 14th tee, you're taking a look at Lee Trevino, who is very much in the thick of things right now. This is a 360-yard hole and plays to par four. That might deceive you a little bit. It is not an easy birdie hole. As a matter of fact, we've got four birdies here today. The idea here is to get the tee shot up right where he put it, right on the right side of the fairway, which opens up the green beautifully for you, and he's in fine shape. Let's go to Chris Schenkel now. We go back now to the 18th tee a moment ago. A 23-year-old tied the Oakmont record with a 65, Lanny Watkins. Here is Johnny Miller, who could break a couple of records. 18th tee, the 72nd hole, leading by a stroke. What a freewheeling swing. I've never seen him hit through the ball as well as he has today. Of course, uh, that's the score speak for itself. But, uh, as I was saying earlier, Chris, the greens are absolutely perfect. They're holding well in the best test of grass on the green I've ever seen. How about a slow motion study of that shot? All right, now watch Johnny Miller. He has a good turn. He's standing very freely. What a beautiful turn. Hands good and high. Look what a beautiful high position. Weight off of the right, left side on the right. Now how, watch how he stays down through here. See his head, how he's still down. Then he really goes through strongly from there, which is hitting the ball through and not to the ball. Let's hear from another professional, David Marr. Thank you, Christopher. And this is Jerry Hurd putting for his birdie, getting ready to putt at the 10th hole. He was over his putt for a second and then stepped away from it. He needs his putt to go four under and into a tie for second. He's got about a 20-footer. One of the real bright young players on the tour. Just bought a new driver this week from Lou Worsham here. And he says he's driven very well with it. And of course he is. And we've just gotten word that Lanny Watkins has bogeyed 18 as Jerry Hurd looks a little disappointed at his birdie attempt here at the 10th hole. He's going to come up and mark it. Julius Boris will putt now, and he has a putt of 8 to 10 feet for his par 4 here. And for a man that doesn't putt well, he's a very good putter when it comes to the U.S. Open and a lot of money. As you saw yesterday when he finished, he made four nice putts coming in on the last four holes. And I know that he's well aware that he needs this. We'll go to Jim McKay. Arnold Palmer put his tee shot in the left rough on the par five, 603 yard, 12th hole. So he took an iron out of that rough. He needs this. We'll go to Jim McKay. Arnold Palmer put his tee shot in the left rough on the par five, 603 yard, 12th hole. So he took an iron out of that rough, and he's okay. He's okay, but he's going to have a longer shot than he would hope to have coming in here. Back to you, Dave. Thank you, and that's Julius Boris putting for his par four at 10 and not getting it, which will drop him back to three under. Of course, if he makes a little putt here that he's got for his bogey five at number 10, in it goes, but he found a little of the open rough here, and it's pretty tough to make pars if you drive it in the rough, especially Julius. He's not too used to being in the rough, so I'm sure he, he hadn't practiced too much out of this week. Jerry Hurd needs this to stay three under. And in a tie with Trevino and now Boris and Schlee. Never seen so much red on a U.S. Open scoreboard. Four for Jerry Hurd. And we'll go to 18, Chris and Byron. Thank you, David. And again, repeating Lenny Watkins with a course equaling 65, being in at one under 283. 
Lanny Watkins. And now, on the 18th fairway, Johnny Miller, who can break two records here on this hole, Byron, and even uh, with his five under, could be the open champion. There you go. Good luck at a young man who played a lot of junior golf at Olympic, where he played as an amateur in 1966 in the open. Okay, Bill Fleming. Thank you, Chris. And right on the parallel fairway of 18 is the 14th, where Lee Trevino is sizing up a 100-yard shot into this very difficult and long green. Lee Trevino has to put this wedge over a little mound in order to be in birdie territory. And if it comes over, will it slide down? Yes, a little bit. He's there. So if he birdies here, he could come within one shot of Johnny Miller. Lee Trevino, who won in 68 and in 71. All right, Jim McKay, you have action there. Arnold Palmer, as we said, kept the ball in play on the fairway, but as we looked at the distance that he actually got, it wasn't very much. I have a feeling that he half topped that ball out of, the, out of the rough. He's got about 175 yards, I would say, to the front of the green. Quickly to you, Chris Schenkel. 26-year-old Johnny Miller, about ready to hit his second shot with an iron before the 18th green. 145 yards away, Chris. He had a tremendous drive. And it's coming in straight. A little bit more length than he would have been right stiff. All right, Jim. Okay, this is Arnold Palmer using a wood. He's probably more like 190 yards then. Flying it up, leftish, going to the left and way left in the rough short of the bunkers around the green. So Arnold now lies three. It's going to be very difficult to get down in two from there for his par. Somebody's going to have to get a couple of birdies to catch Johnny Miller, and at the moment it doesn't look like it. We'll be finding out more when we return in a minute. Now back live, secretariat type applause, Byron. I should say. And secretariat, of course, had to take a saliva test. 